Why hello, you amazing, beautiful people. Welcome back to another Big Taylor Swift Friday. So, all of you have screamed this one at me. All of you have told me this is what you want me to react to next. So let's do it. And that is Taylor Swift's journey to fearless. Now, I'm very excited for this. I've, I don't, I, I'm, I'm thinking this is a documentary. I'm not 100% sure. I think it is. Um, it could be a live performance. I don't actually know. Now, it's two hours and ten minutes long, so this will either be split up into five or six parts. We'll just end it at, like, natural bits, like we did when we watched Miss Americana. We'll literally end it at the, like, we'll do the same thing, you know? Like, um, like when it, when it feels like it's a good time to end an episode, we'll end an episode. Whether or not it's 20 minutes or 40 minutes or an hour, we'll just do that. Like, the natural end. And we'll, and we'll, and we'll do, that's how we did it with uh, that, because it's impossible to split these up otherwise, and that's what we'll do. We'll try our best. Um, but yeah, super excited for this. Hopefully it's going to give me like, again, more of an insight into Taylor's past um, and, and like, and, 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 and everything around her that things I don't know. And that's why I love these so much. Um, I do want to say a couple of things before I jump into this one. First, hopefully by the time this video is out, um, the next episode of the Hits Differently podcast will be out as well. If it isn't, it'll be coming out soon. Um, but the lovely, amazing Swifties, Molly and Ryan, invited me back on the Hits Differently podcast to have a chat with them about my uh, my experience seeing Taylor live in London. They asked me tons of questions. I asked them because they saw Taylor in Edinburgh, and uh, we just had a wonderful chat. It was so much fun, so go check that out. Please go support them. They are so freaking lovely. They are some of the absolute sweetest persons in... Persons? I'm sticking with it. Sweetest persons in this entire world. I'll leave a link to uh, their episode if it's up. Um, God, I'll leave a link to the episode if it's up in the description and also the pinned comment on this video. So please, please, for me, head on over there. Give them a like, give them a comment, watch it. And fall in love with them just like I did because they are the sweetest people ever. All right, go support them. That's the, the Hits Differently podcast. Um, and also, if you haven't already, last Friday we dropped our Taylor Swift Live in London um, full vlog. It is my first official vlog I have created as a YouTuber. There are vlogs on this channel, but they are old random vlogs I just made for fun. This is my first official vlog I created as a YouTuber. Um, and I want to say everyone who joined me for the premiere... Thank you so much. It was such a fun time just chatting. There was like a thousand. We broke a thousand people at one point. There's just a thousand Swifties in there. We're having the best time. It was absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me on that. You guys were making me so unbelievably emotional. Everyone loved it. And the feedback has been so positive. I, I already want to make another one. I already. I'm literally like, if I, if man, if I just had like, <laughs> if I ever win the lottery, <laughs> I'm just saying. Because I'm like, man, I'd love to just fly to America and watch the Eras tour in there, do a vlog around that. I'm, man, one, one day, <laughs> one day, <laughs> it's like, because I'm already like, I want to do more, because <laughs> it was so much fun, and the feedback was great, it's an hour long, I hope you all enjoyed it, I hope the vlog came out well, and everyone enjoyed it, and yeah, and I, and, uh, and yeah, I can't believe I've seen Taylor now, I can't, every time I watch anything from that night, I literally just almost, I, I just almost break down, it's just, it just feels like a fever dream, I can't believe it was real, how does she do it, how does she do that, night after night, for like four hours, how does she look so like, refreshed at the end of the show and everyone in the crowd is like oh like leaning on each other feet hurting and taylor just looks like she could do how, she, she she is a machine she is in, she is incredible amazing i'm sorry this intro has been so long the last thing i want to talk about as well is i recently put out something very personal on twitter as well and i want to say thank you so much for all the kind messages um i've been quite open i'm always trying to be open and honest about myself and i try and share as much of myself with all of you as i can um and i wanted to be really honest with a situation that happened recently and let everyone know about it and i want to say everyone who follows me on twitter everyone who comments on it thank you so much and also twitter instagram tiktok all over like um the taylor swift concert just like blew up um my instagram is literally has been replaced now by just swifties <laughs> It's literally been replaced. It's, it's hilarious and amazing. Um, so thank you so much to everyone who's followed me on all those platforms. I hope you enjoy the content over there. On Instagram, I just try and post more of just me doing normal stuff. Um, it's not like a glitz and glamour, you know, I'm by a beach and like my food and that sort of stuff. It's literally just what I do. A um, lot of stuff with my family and that sort of things. And uh, yeah, I, I tried to post loads around the concert. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you. It was a super long intro, but I just wanted to talk about all that. Lots happened. Um, so I feel like there's a lot to be said. If any of you have any questions that you want to ask me about the concert or about anything, just put them in the comments section. If they're upvoted and I can see them, I will answer them. Um, so yeah, I always try and answer as many comments as I can. I do apologize if I don't catch yours. 
Um, it used to be a lot easier, but now sometimes I get like 400, 500, and I try and get like 100 sometimes, but it's very difficult. And if I ever heart your comment but don't reply, I have indeed read it. I just haven't had time, and I do apologize, but I do try my best. So I, I, I hope I try my best to, to like, you guys give me your time. I want to give you mine. Um, anyway, I'm gonna stop talking. Let's jump into this one. Let's begin our new Taylor Swift journey with the journey to fearless. I can't. <laughs> so cute. Welcome to Taylor Swift's Journey to Fearless. You belong with me. You belong with me. This is a story of a little girl who dared to dream big. From her earliest performances. <laughs> ah, it's the best. And we do mean early. Oh, it's the to best. To her first big break. That was my first huge crowd experience. Then I was addicted. And the challenges along the way. And I went through periods of time where I didn't have friends. That was tough as a mom to hear the shunning. She didn't know it then, but even as a kid, Taylor Swift was fearless. Hi, I'm Taylor. I'm 11. I want a record deal. If you give me a call, that would be awesome. We'll show you everything that went into oh making fearless happen word. and share with you the inspiration behind some of your favorite. Honestly, <laughs> I'm not surviving this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word you know what i was just sitting here thinking isn't it like amazing how that same like smiley teenager that we see that's just super happy and excited to do this is literally the same taylor you see on stage at the errors tour that big smile that enjoyment of what she does is never it's never gone and it's so damn precious Rich songs it was a song about a breakup that i had to really address Come on the road with Taylor for her first headlining tour. Spend the next three nights backstage, on stage, and around the world Yay. for Taylor Swift's oh, Journey to Fearless. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. This, this is the cheesiest thing ever. I love it. <laughs> it's so cheesy. You got the voiceover, the everything. This is the best. I love it. The high school locker room, like locker doors, and... this is the best. about something that you said she doesn't get your humor like I do I'm in my room it's a typical Tuesday night I'm listening to the kind of music she doesn't like she'll never know your story like I do accent when she says belong with me is adorable <laughs> by the way it's adorable she's got like such a twang there it just is so cute ah <laughs> oh man fearless ah it's just it's just so like helplessly romantic is that the right word is it hopelessly romantic you know what? both of them work <laughs> it just is but in like the best way you know it's so heartwarming and it, it's just like a real like 
fun to it. And like the, the freaking crowd is already like singing along so much. I can literally hear them in the background just singing along. Oh, I love the stage. I love what she's wearing. Like that's like the, the band, the sort of like band out of it, right? In America. We don't get this sort of stuff here in the UK. So I'm basically just going off what I've seen in movies. Um, and like the lockers and like the school set up and the way she like, like she's always had this. This was 2010. 2010. This is this is 14 years ago, and she hasn't changed a bit. She's completely changed, and yet hasn't changed at all. Oh man, the runny nose already started. Look at the camera! Oh, crazy! Oh, it's the best. The lead! <laughs> I was gonna pause and talk about something, but I just saw something happening. I apologize. Look at her! Oh my god, come on! Look at her! Oh, come on! The look! The look! That is that, man. I, that is that is literally the same. That is the same! You know what I mean? Completely different, completely the same. Literally, that's the same freaking look. That is the same look. You know, rising up underneath the fans of the Eros tour at the beginning, and then just looking around the crowd. That's the same look. Taylor was born with this. <laughs> Taylor was born for this. Ah, oh, man. One more time. You know, one more time. One more time. I don't even care. Look, we got to see the look. One more time. Everyone. Look at the look. Look at the look. Jeez, Taylor. That face is everything. You say that I'm the one who understands you've been here all along, so why can't you see you belong with me? Yeah. Standing by you, waiting at your back door all this time. How could you not know, baby? You belong. Look at that picture. That's a freaking poster right there. That is a poster. Look at that. <laughs> I, 
want to elaborate. I want to, I like, you're literally watching. This is, this, I'm literally watching this. I am in the best mood. I am so happy. I'm having the best time. I got this stupid freaking grin on my face. And I just want to, and it's just making me think. It's like elaborating on what I said on Twitter recently. Uh, there are people in our lives who will look at us as fans of something, you know? And Taylor said it herself. As fans of something, as enjoying something, as having a good time, not hurting anyone, you know? And that, and this, 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 this can be elaborated on in so many different levels. There are literally people who just want to live their lives happily and you have the worst kind of people just trying to interfere. But what I'm trying to say is it's so weird that we're all just over here, just happy, trying to spread love. And there are people who just want to like ruin it. And there are people who just don't like it. And they're these bitter people in our lives. And I am going to learn to take pride in disappointing the people that I don't want to be like. And that, that's okay with me. You know, I'm fine. I can't! I can't! It's too cute! I <laughs> the cuteness! I my first memory of I music happened so early. We would always go to the beach in the summer and I would run from blanket to blanket, from family to family, and just sing. Yay! Taylor! Whoa! I, can't. I got my first guitar when I was eight or nine years old. I couldn't motivate myself to learn because my fingers were too small. I always had the guitar around and had it in the corner. And uh, when I was about 12, this magical twist of fate, the guy who my parents had hired to come fix my computer, I'm doing my homework. And uh, he looks over and sees the guitar in the corner. And he was like, do you play guitar? And I said, oh, no, I, I tried, but I, no. He said, do you want me to teach you a few chords? And I was like, yeah, yes. That was that. Shout out that guy. <laughs> Shout out that guy. <laughs> that guy. That is that is the universe. That is the universe incarnation right there. That is that that is like one of those like, you know, like a butterfly flaps its wings. That is one of those. Are you kidding me? Is it was that much of a coincidence? Are you insane? Are you insane? Random IT person just comes in and is like, hey, you want me to teach you some chords? And then boom! <laughs> then boom! The tiny little spark that ignited this huge explosion that is Taylor Swift. Are you kidding me? That's how it started! Are you kidding me? That is insane! That is insane! Oh my word. Oh my word. Who knew? Who knew that like literally that would just spark this thing inside Taylor and then the hard work and the dedication and the passion and the commitment she made to just honing and creating this beautiful diamond that is everything that she oh my god are you kidding me are you kidding me that is amazing that is so cool how did I not know that story that is the best story ever are you are you insane that is amazing <clears throat> that is absolutely amazing oh, that's so cool that's so cool I, I literally am such a believer of like the universe, um, like uh, like these little moments in the universe and fate and those sort of things. I'm such a believer, such a sucker for it, right? Like random story, this is, this is completely relevant, but this is like an example of it. I met my wife, so at a festival, and I've been to that festival many times before. And every time we go to this festival, we camp in the exact same spot, every time. And I went with my dad and my brother. And on the third time going to this festival, we went back to the exact same spot we always go to. <coughs> And our space was free, where we always go. And we literally stood in our space. We we're about to set up our tent. And we're like, looking around. And we were like, why don't we go somewhere else this time? Don't know, I don't even know why we thought this. Like, why don't we go camp somewhere else today? And it's like, all right. And we went to a completely different end of the, the campsite. We came into the campsite. There was a road left. There was a road right. And the road right <clears throat> led to the toilets. Yucky road, you know? It's like, why would you want to camp near the toilets? And the road left led to a nice open field. And we were like, that looks nice. Let's go camp near the toilets. <laughs> no idea why. So we did. And we found a spot and we camped right next to my wife. And that is how I met her. I have no, I, I, I am such a believer that the universe just has these like hands in fate, you know, it just guides you and, and you just have to let it guide you. And it will just like be like, over here you go. And it just guides you. I truly believe that. I truly believe that. And this, no one will convince me otherwise. This, this is, this is fate. This is, this is fate having a helping hand, you know? You know, Taylor got her guitar at eight. She wasn't really interested in it. 
You know, Fate was like, and here's a guitar. And he was like watching Taylor. And Taylor wasn't interested. He's like, you're supposed to be playing this guitar, Taylor. Why are you not playing this guitar? Right. Send in the IT man. He just comes in and he's like, <laughs> you know, oh, hello. I am the IT man. Just like Fate dressed up as an IT man. It's like, you should play the guitar i can teach you <laughs> boom love it i was just bit of a tangent there but... <laughs> about wanting to play all the time i was songwriting for it's all of my cute. free time after that look at her you adorable i think the first full song that i ever wrote was called lucky you and it was about this girl who dares to be different at that time, that was sort of, you know, d describing herself. I got teased a lot, and I got made fun of a lot, and I, you know, went through periods of time where I didn't have friends because all the other little girls were going to sleepovers and playing soccer, and, and Taylor wanted to sing on a stage, and that was a little bit different. And I stood there in the middle of the uh, giant basketball She's arena 12 there. with my little sparkly American flag shirt <laughs> and my white pants and my red headband. I was very patriotic looking. I don't think I had ever been that nervous in my life. Once again, Taylor Swift. <laughs> they would do a write-up in the local paper causing a not-so-fun day for me the next day at school. My worst time of the day was when I went to go pick up Taylor at school and I would know that things maybe hadn't been so great that day at school and so I knew I was going to hear whatever happened and so um, you are such an that was tough mom. as a mom to hear the um, ostracizing that went through the uh, literally the shunning such an that amazing mom. would take place at school where she would sit down at a table with Super her lunch mom. tray and everyone would move. As a parent, there there is nothing more painful than hearing that your child is in pain. You'll take you'll take any bullet for them, but you realize that this is also something that they have to go through. So that's when I got it in my mind that there was this magical place called Nashville where dreams come true and Faith Hill got discovered. And I thought to myself, Nashville. Well, I've got to go there. <laughs> All right, this may be mean to say, but <laughs> honestly, any child in her school that bullied her. You are bellend. <laughs> Absolute bellend. I'm not <laughs> maybe it's mean to say to children, but that is just, you're, you're you're total bellend. So just I don't care. I don't care. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This sweet, just such a friendly, kind soul. I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't get it, you know? Ah, it breaks my damn heart so much, you know, I just, I, I literally put myself in her mother's shoes as well And imagine what I'd feel like if that was my sons and like I drop them off at school And I go pick them up and they come out and they're like all shy and all quiet and all sad And you can tell something happened, but they don't really want to tell you and you really want to know and you want to help them But you can't and it's like what, what can I do as a parent? Ah, oh, my word um, her, both her parents are just like super parents. I have to say it. The clips of her dad, literally, I saw that clip of her dad literally like um, giving the cake, like like sharing uh, Taylor's cake with like other, with like Taylor, with Swifties, uh, like it's like, uh, like a game or whatever. And, and just like, and her mom just being this absolute superstar. I saw her mom like walking amongst the crowd as well. Was it in London? Like the recent footage as well. And just, um, just role model parents, you know, parents that you just, you want to be like. I begged my parents for, I think, a solid year. Please, can we take a trip to Nashville? Just nonstop. I want to go to Nashville. Just relentlessly. It was all she talked about. So on spring break, we went to Nashville to go check it out. Everyone you meet in Nashville has the same dream. And a lot of them wanted to be exactly what I wanted to be, which was an artist and want to be on the stage in front of a lot of people. Taylor would, you know, say, that's Mercury Records, pull over. You know, I need to run my demo CD. I'd get out and I'd run up to the door. Hi, I'm Taylor. Uh, I'm 11. I want a record deal. If you give me a call, that would be awesome. And I knew that I, I had to figure out some, I love way, so much. <laughs> some way to get better uh, and have more to offer. Music was something that 
was so necessary for me to be happy. I would play for hours and hours until my fingers were bleeding. She never put it down. She wouldn't put it down. We'd have to literally say to her, all right, put the guitar down, <laughs> come to dinner, then you can go right back and play. But it, it became a matter of forcing her to put it down at that point. I've literally got this image of this, like, being Taylor, and, like, <laughs> they're, like, sitting at the dinner table, and then and she's just standing over there, just this one. They're, like, eating that. Taylor, dinner is getting cold now. <laughs> and she's just, like, doing this. That is my image. I love that. I love that. And they're, like, just come eat. You can have the guitar afterwards. And she's, like, one more, one more. And it's, like, please, Taylor, the food. <laughs> I just fell in love with it. This is so great. Listen to how good she sounds. Listen to how good she sounds. I also want to say this. As a parent, I feel like... <clears throat> as a parent, like, um, Taylor's parents are like a good example. Because you get parents that when they have kids, they force their own dreams and what they think is good for their kids and what they want their kids to do. And they force that on their children. And then you have parents who listen to their children who see what their children's passions are and who push their children to follow their own passions, you know, to follow their own journeys, to become their own people, not shadows of what you wanted to be, but their own person. And those are the best freaking parents, you know, that find out what their children want, what their passions are. And that, that is how you, that is happiness, you know? And the one thing you see on Taylor's face more than anything is happiness. When she's playing an instrument, she looks always happy. We decided when to move singing, to Nashville always when happy. Taylor had actually been offered a development deal. Got At my that nose. Point, we knew we weren't just proud parents. And nose is a mess. Maybe we should put her in the area where she could make the most of it. When I was 13, uh, sorry, I'm a mess. I landed a meeting with um, a record label in town, RCA. They gave me a development deal, which is basically like, we believe in you, kind of. We're going to watch you. It's not like you're making an album now. We kind of believe in you. Taylor we'll and I you. would go in there sometimes once a week with new songs that she had written. They would look at us and say, well, it's getting a little closer. They weren't saying, yes, that's a great song. Let's put it on a record. At the end of the year, they had a chance to either sign me or watch me for another year without commitment. They looked at us and said, you know what? She's, we're not ready to offer a record deal. I did something that you don't usually do in Nashville when you have an in with a record label. I walked away because I had a feeling that I was not going to be able to record my own music uh, that I'd written. I looked at her sort of panic stricken like, this is a major record label. You don't get that every day. Are you sure you want to walk away from this? And she said, absolutely. I this showcase at the Bluebird Cafe. Oh, man. Ironically, the place where Faith Hill got discovered. And I played my guitar and sang a bunch of songs that I'd written. There was one guy in the audience named Scott Borchetta. So he came up to me at, after the show and he said, I want you on my record label and I want you to write all your own music. And I was so excited. And I get a call from him later that week and he goes, hey, so the good news is I want you on my record label. Bad news is that I don't actually have a record label yet. Well, he explained to me that he doesn't have a building, he doesn't have a name for it. He just has this dream that he wants to do it. And so he says, "Will you just let me let me just let me just quickly Google something. I just want to confirm before I say something. Um, I just want to check something here. Um, this Scott guy, right?" Yeah, okay. All right. <clears throat> okay, I thought I thought so. <clears throat> I just wanted to confirm if this was the same one and uh and it is the same one. All right. All right. We This is weird. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, moving on. Moving on. He just has this dream that he wants to do it. <clears throat> Bellend. <clears throat> Sorry, I sneezed. <laughs> and so he says, will you just please wait for me? And for some reason, I was willing to wait for that because she believed in the person who was going to be running that record label, and he really believed in her. I knew that if I could 
be a it's part so, of. Thi- I'm gonna be honest. This is very bittersweet, isn't it? Okay, it's very bittersweet. We're watching Taylor's journey. It's very bittersweet. I'm gonna look at like um, I'm gonna choose to look at the sweetness side of this. Otherwise, it's just gonna like be a bitter taste. So that's what I'm gonna do because it is bittersweet. I really hope I'm not confusing. I really hope I'm not confusing the person and people are watching this going, "What's your what's your problem, Luke?" This is this is the Scott, right? <laughs> All right, I'm just checking. But yeah, bittersweet. Um, obviously, it worked out for Taylor in the long run, but everything that she was put through, absolutely fucking heartbreaking. So I, I it's hard to like mask those feelings, but. I'm just gonna focus on Taylor's journey and ignore this other person, right? In her, I knew that if I could be a part of building something from the ground up, of being the first artist on a brand new record label, that would be okay with me as long as I could do something really adventurous and bold and new. So I signed my record deal with Scott Borchetto and um, I was making an album full of songs that I had written by myself. This little red thing, this red guy is the, the best windscreen you got, so they won't hear that. It's awesome. There was no <laughs> inclination that this was gonna work out, um, but we really believed in it. Putting out my first single was just such a cool experience, because I just didn't know what was going to happen. I remember putting the physical CD singles into envelopes to mail out to radio with my mom. I got to go on radio tour. And then you hear tour, you think tour bus? No. Rental car. Taurus. Me. In the back seat. Hi, baby. How's it going? How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I brought you... Taylor made the cookies! <laughs> She is too fucking good for this world, man. She is, she is. She is too damn pure. She is this shining freaking gem. Oh my word, she's so precious. She brings homemade cookies. I can't. I can't. Stop doing this to me. I swear to God. I swear to God. How I die is man dies of happiness, heart attack watching Taylor Swift. Hi, baby. How's it going? How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I brought you cookies. Sure did. Look at that. Going from radio station to radio station to radio station, and every time I was sure going did. to the radio station, I would... Sure No, the correct response is, thank you. You brought us cookies? Thank you very much. Sure did look at that. Thank you. <laughs> you say thank you when someone gives you something. Play in the conference room for a couple of DJs, and I would, like, beg them to put me on the air. And it worked. My, oh, my album nose. sold 39000 in the first week. And then over time, it started to sell like this. Then something really crazy started to happen. I was opening up for every single country headliner imaginable. I was opening up for Brad Paisley, George Strait, Kenny Chesney, Tim McGraw, like all these people I'd always wanted to open Brad up shows Paisley. for. I was a nervous wreck. I'd rehearsed nonstop over and over again, but I loved it. Those were some of my favorite times. For this song, I would love it. If you would have your cell phones and glow sticks or anything sparkly that you might have. Hold them up for me. And I would love it if you would sing along with this song. Because this is the first song that you ever heard from me. Huge shout out to the people who brought the giant Taylor lights. Ah, gosh. Ah, oh, man. How did, why did it take me so freaking long to find Taylor? Why did it take me so long? You said you wear my blue eyes shine, but those Georgia stars sheen that night. I said that's a lie. A boy in a Chevy truck that had a tendency of getting stuck back roads. Now, and I was right there beside him all summer long, and then the time we woke up to find out summer gone. Won't you think Tim a 
ground. I hope you think my favorite song, the one we dance to all night long. Moon like a spotlight on the bed. When you think happiness, I hope you think that little black dress. Think of my head on your chest and my old faded blue jeans. When you think Tim McGraw, I hope you think of me. All those like tones that like are so identifiable with Taylor's voice that like lean into like whisper that she does, you know, like here, like she does with the uh, the like R E notes, and then um and then like even the squeak, and then just like her expressions, her movements, her eye contact. I I have no idea. Like you see that on her from such a young age. I have no idea. It almost feels like she was like born with all of the talents, like and these like looks and everything she needed. She was like she was just born with like the knowledge of it. Because just watching her, like no matter how far you go back, you see that on her. And I always expect to go back to like a point and and just like see like a different Taylor and a Taylor that doesn't have all those characteristics and doesn't have those like vocal characteristics. And I, I've never gone back far enough to see that. It's 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 amazing, isn't it? It's like, I literally, the Taylor you see on stage now is just the same Taylor. Like I said, the same, but not the same. It's, it's, I don't even know how to describe it. And listening to this now, it's just crazy. Because it could easily just be Taylor now performing Tim McCraw at the Eras tour. Obviously with some vocal differences, but personality-wise, it's pretty much identical. Same smile. Same shining eyes. It's hard not to find it all a little bittersweet. And looking back on all of that, it's nice to believe when you think to McGraw. I hope you think my favorite song, the one we dance to on my lawn. The moon like a spotlight on the bed. such a cool energy walking through that crowd people are crying uh, and i love excitable people so what the was, frick is this it was one of my favorite things i just i hug a lot of people over the course of uh that song what the frick is this I'm just gonna spend my life trying to be half as sweet as she is. This is amazing. Her heart is insane. Ah, man. I really, I, I feel like no matter, like you, you can always just be a better version of yourself and Taylor just makes me want to just continue to just try and be a better version of myself. Just seeing her go into the crowd after this song and just hug everybody is something I've just never seen before. I didn't even, this is the best thing ever. It is amazing. You know, go on these radio shows, bring hot baked cookies, and I made these cookies, and, and doing this on a live performance, and how can anyone just not love her? How can anyone just not want to, just, how can anyone not be proud of her? And <laughs> Oh, my word. God, the people who really try to throw stones at this beautiful freaking, what's the word, glass house? I don't know what it's called. I don't know how to finish this metaphor. But those are just the wrong kind of people, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Because this is something that is just nothing short of pure happiness, kindness, 
and it's always been like that these are the these are the right kind of people you know oh my word this this simple action has just melted my soul i show a lot of extra love this. to the little kids that i know are there for their first concert look at this no oh freaking i can't i can't i'm doomed man i'm doomed it was really important for me to go out there and actually say hi to people and thank them for coming and be right there next to them because I'm always going to want to go the extra mile for them because I can't believe the extra thousand miles they've gone for me. I love everything she says. I love everything she says. I love everything she says. I agree with everything she says. Oh. Is there more I could do? Can, is there more I can do to like to just make this a, a happier, a better place? Is there more I can do as a person? Is there more I can do? There's there's got to be right. There's got to be more I can do. There's there's more I can do. <laughs> I just I just freaking I can't. I can't. favorite things every single night. And I'm back for the first time since then. I'm standing on your street. There's no land I left on your doorstep. And the first thing that you read is when you think Tim McGraw. I hope you think my favorite song. Turn Houston radio on. I hope it takes you back to that place when you think happiness. I hope you think that little black dress. Think of my head on your chest and my old faded blue jeans. When you think Tim McGraw, I hope you think of me. That is the perfect place to end, isn't it? Come on, it's got to be. That's the perfect place to end the first part. And because we had the long <laughs> intro as well. <clears throat> I want to say sorry for sniffing so much. When I cry, my nose runs. And I've got like, um, I don't know if it's cold or hay fever or something. Um, I get quite bad hay fever in the summer. And um, like ridiculously bad. And I have to like um, take this nose spray. And for some freaking reason... Getting that nose spray is very difficult <laughs> and every time I run out I try and get it and every time I try and get it the doctors prescribe me the wrong stuff Every time and it, this time I just gave up They sent me the same pills twice instead of this nose spray and I was like, you know, what? I'll just take the pills um, But the pills don't really have any help. I know this is a random tangent, but I just wanted to let you guys know so If I sniff more when I cry it's because of that as well. Hopefully when winter comes around I won't be doing it as much <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I, um, I, I want to say something. I'm actually going to put out a post tonight because I, I need, I just want to say something. <laughs> I want to say, I don't know. I, I don't understand and I don't know what happened, but I'm so proud of all of you. Like this is a YouTube channel where I just have the most random viewers in the world, like ever. And I can't speak of other channels because I don't know. 
But the fact that we nearly have 500,000 people on this channel, <clears throat> and we have people who have joined my channel from country music, to uh, rap music, to anime, to beatboxes, to J-pop and K-pop. We have people from the Philippines and Indonesia, all over the world. All these different artists, all these different songs, all this different content that I've reacted to. And people subscribing to this channel for different reasons. Some people only watching, you know, some people might only watch like my Pentatonix reactions, my Taylor Swift reactions, my anime reactions. And this whole channel, everything on this channel, by the way, this is the truth. This entire channel was created because I wanted to see more. And that was literally it. One day, I uploaded a video and someone recommended something to me and that was it. That was literally it. The, I, I started a New Year's resolution to upload two videos a week for an entire year. And in nine months of doing that year, <clears throat> I went up um, 200 subscribers, like zero to 200 people, nine months. And then... In the final part of that year, I went up like a thousand and I got, I, upload, I uploaded a reaction to a video and someone literally recommended an artist and I reacted to that artist and then someone recommended another artist and I reacted to that artist and that led us here. And that is what I have done from day one. Every single video on this channel is from you guys. Everything. This whole channel is nothing to do with me. I am just the face on the camera. I don't control this journey. I do nothing but listen to you all. When I'm reacting to an anime song or an anime episode, it is because the audience has asked me to react to it. When I'm reacting to a new song from an artist or anything like that, you guys have told me to react to that. Every single video on this channel, I have never picked. You will pick, all of you. Every video comes from the comment section or like Patreon or like all these places where people recommend stuff. It comes from all of you. And I've just gone onto this channel, tried to be as open-minded as possible, and just listened to what people recommend. And that has caused us to have the most random audience. And I want to say I'm so proud because we have such a varied landscape of people. And everyone is so sweet. Everyone is so kind. I never have any issues. We literally did a YouTube premiere to Taylor Swift. And there was one negative comment. Thousand people? one negative comment and it was the most wholesome place ever and the negative comment was just someone joking around it's, and that was it it's that's this community and i'm just so proud of it i i cannot believe it <laughs> i feel like we have like reacted to all these artists all these songs gone all over the world and listened to all this music and just got the best of, of everyone <laughs> and i just feel so so lucky that I just have this this community and I just want to give you guys everything I can every bit of my time that's why I spend hours every day replying to comments and reading comments and trying to go through patreon dms and and just try and give you guys as much as I can and at the end of the day I only exist because people let me exist that's it I'm only here because of you guys so I just want to say I'm really thankful and unbelievably grateful for every single person who watches my videos, likes, comments, supports this channel in any way they do, shares it, whatever you do, because I'm only here because of you. And that is the truth. I, I, without you guys, there's, there's no me. And I just want to say thank you. I, I, I so mean it. I will spend as m I will give you all as much time as I possibly can because you will give me yours. And there is nothing more valuable than time. And I am so grateful. So seriously, from the bottom of my heart, thank you every single one of you. I feel so lucky. I do. I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe this is my job. I can't believe this has happened to me. I will never feel like I deserve it. Even if you guys yell at me that I do, I, I just won't. I, I, I don't know. But I feel very lucky. And this is going to be so much fun to react to. <laughs> It's going to be the absolute best. Seeing young Taylor, seeing this journey, seeing her growth, seeing her like commitment, her dedication, her hunger, her drive, hearing the origin stories of things I didn't know about, getting more information, it is the best. 
and seeing Taylor perform Tim McCraw live and going into the crowd and hugging everybody, I honestly, my heart exploded. It was just the sweetest thing ever. It made me love her even more. I didn't even know it was possible. And just seeing that kindness that she's always had, inviting people over to her house, baking people treats, going to a radio station, making them cookies. I feel like Taylor has just, just always been so, so damn kind. It's so simple, isn't it? Kindness. It's so simple, but my word, it is the best thing ever. I love it. God, I love it. Ah, oh, man. Anyway, I'm looking forward to watching this series so much already, if you couldn't tell. A um, lot of rambling in this one. <laughs> but it's been a bit of an emotional week. I want to say thank you so much. I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Our Taylor journey is just beginning. And uh, let's see where it takes us. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. But more importantly, than all, just have an awesome freaking weekend. Uh, tomorrow, I'm actually doing a 24-hour live stream. So if you want to come along to that, I'll be live on Twitch. Come along and say hi. I'm going to be playing loads of games and just hanging out and having fun. Um, but yeah, anyway, I love you wonderful people. Have the greatest weekend ever. Um, if I ever meet all of you, I'm giving you cuddles just like Taylor is <laughs> giving everyone cuddles. You ever see me in real life? I'm a cuddler. You come give me a big old cuddle. All right, I don't mind. Um, right, have an awesome freaking weekend. As always, my friends, you will see me in the next video.